Hi, I'm Sean. Today I'm going to show you how I made this workstation featuring Rockler's T-Track tabletop, some hold downs, and lots of drawers for storage. I started by milling some reclaimed 2x4s to 1.25 inch thick and 3 inches wide to make the base for this workstation. I cross-cut them at the table saw to the length I needed, 4 at 18 inches and 8 at 33 and a half inches. I wanted the surface of the workstation to be just below the height of my table saw, so that's how I came up with the height dimensions. I started the construction of the base by assembling the two sides using pocket hole joinery. I like to add extra clamping pressure to the joint as I drive the screws. That helps to keep the pieces aligned. I then use a right angle clamp to hold the front apron to the side assembly so I can secure it with more screws. It's just a rinse and repeat from here to assemble the base. To make the workstation mobile, I added 2 inch locking casters. I used stem casters fastened with T-nuts since that's what I had on hand. These casters are a good option for light duty applications, but ultimately I added some plywood blocking to the sides of each foot and used a different heavier duty caster. Now the base is free moving and easy to relocate. To attach the tabletop to the base, I made some blocks. I countersink two screws to go into the aprons and one screw to go up into the underside of the table. The whole thing gets a 1 8 inch round over and a good sanding to 180 grit and a coat of boiled linseed oil. Once the finish had cured, I slid on Rockler's T-Track tabletop onto the base. I positioned mine to have a 3 inch overhang to one side and a 2 inch overhang on the front and the back. Then I secured the top with the screws. It helps to pre-drill into the underside of the table. That prevents the top from lifting off the base. I wanted to make this workstation more versatile, so I attached a 2 and 3 quarter inch by 3 inch laminated block with a groove for a 24 inch piece of Rockler's T-Track to accept a couple inline auto adjusting clamps. This makes it easy to hold a workpiece so I can do light work on the edges. To enclose the base, I used my trim router to cut a 3 8 inch by half inch deep rabbit all around the inside of the side pieces for some scrap half inch plywood I had lying around the shop. This is a great way to use up material that is otherwise too small for other projects. The back panel is simply screwed into place. To install the drawer glides, I used Rockler's Universal Drawer Slide Jig. This made holding the drawer cabinet members in place and spacing them a breeze with perfect alignment every time. You could use a tri-square, a combination square, or even a plywood spacer if need be. I wanted to add a quality power strip to the back to plug sanders and other handheld tools into. I hardwired this 15 amp strip into the table with Romex 
secured the wire with staples, and added an outlet to the end for a power tool extension cord that I picked up at the local home center. To make the drawer boxes, I switched out my 24 tooth ripping blade for a 60 tooth crosscut blade and ripped some strips of Baltic birch plywood I had left over from another project. I constructed the drawer boxes using Matthias Wandel's Screw Advanced Box Joint Jig. I made cutting the box joints relatively easy. After the glue up, I flushed the joints at the table saw using my flush cut fence attachment. I then installed the drawer slide members to the drawer boxes using the supplied screws and slid the boxes in place. I really like these one inch over travel drawer glides. To make my drawers even more efficient and organized, I found these tray organizers. They were a little long for my drawers, so I cut a little off the ends at the bandsaw, removed the fuzz with a razor knife, and they fit perfectly. For the drawer fronts, I used some reclaimed Douglas fir from a shipping crate. I marked the center line, applied some CA glue, spaced them with a couple of fender washers, and secured them with 23 gauge pin nails. All that was left to do was to add some poles. And I really liked the look of Nick Ferry's drawer and door poles, so I made those with some leftover half-inch conduit. They look sharp on this workstation. The vertical sliders are made in a similar fashion, except the panels are set into place by rabbiting around the inside of the glued up box frame. You could round the corners of the panel to match the corners that the rabbiting bit leaves, but I decided to chisel the corners square. The panels just drop in and are held with a bit of glue and clamped. After the drawer fronts and poles were added to the vertical sliders, the workstation is fully functional and ready to customize with my most frequently used tools while assembling and finishing. Special thanks to Rockler Woodworking and Hardware for supplying a lot of the products that I use to build this workstation. Links to the products will be in the video description below. Also, you could check out the written article on my website for links to those products 
and to plans for this build. You can also follow me on Instagram where you'll see project progress in photos and stories throughout the week. That's it everybody. Thanks for watching. See you next time.